The theory is called sympathetic resonance. It applies to any stringed instrument that produces sound when two notes are being played together. Reason suggests that if each string were tuned to absolute pitch, you'd create the perfect harmony. But following pure logic never brought anyone closer to great music. Harmonies that truly resonate with the heart and soul are found in spaces hidden deep within the present moment. The sound of one note interacting with another becomes particular to this one piano in this one room. And since the tone of each note is being sensed rather than measured, the music that's played is able to inspire personal feelings that even strangers can share. This is the 13th annual convention of the National Association of Piano Tuners. 90 delegates who gathered in Indianapolis over three days in 1922 to have some fun, elect officers, and address the standards of their profession. The piano was considered an essential part of American life in the early 20th century. By 1922, Record players had been marketed for only two decades. The first commercial radio station had begun broadcasting just two years previous. Increasingly, people were listening to music without seeing who was playing it. Up until that time, hearing music was exclusively a live experience. Performer and listener occupying a place in time. A million seller meant that a song had sold a million copies of sheet music, most often to individuals who had learned to read and play for the enjoyment of friends and family. In 1920, an America that was one-third our present population purchased over five times the number of pianos being sold today. So in this photograph, you can sense an air of satisfaction. After all, the future of their business looked very bright in 1923, and up here on the roof of the 11-story Severn Hotel, these piano tuners found themselves high above the noise of the city. just a little closer to that absolute silence they needed to create perfect harmony in this imperfect world. <laughs> 